Hey, what's up, you guys? This is the Random Jam Podcast. I am Lane Mitchell. I'm Reese McKinney. And we are coming to you live, as always, from Dallas, Texas. Uh, as you know, we discuss all things entertainment related, including but not limited to music, television, TV, games, sports, etc. Um, today, on episode five, we have a really special treat for you guys. Um, we brought on Jeremy Mitchell. He's the founder of Mitchell Bat Company, no relations, but um, Jeremy. <laughs> He's a really awesome guy, and Reese is going to tell you a little bit more about uh, the experience he had with him. So recently, I got the chance to sit down and talk to Jeremy Mitchell from Mitchell Bat Company. Super awesome guy, super humble. He loves baseball, which is the theme of today, if you haven't noticed, and uh, especially with the World Series coming up, uh, which we actually get to talk a little bit about that. And um, we just got to sit down and talk about his journey. Uh, the awesome things that he's gotten to do with Mitchell Bat Company, uh, where the inspiration came for this idea, um, the idea of creating these bats, painting them, doing awesome stuff, getting people's logos on them, uh, and just a business that started small in just a little notebook and blew up and went across the world. So um, I'm excited to share share with you guys that interview and get to hear his journey that he's been on the past seven years. Yeah, it was, it was for sure cool hearing his story. I um, mean, you can tell he's very passionate about what he does. Um, and it was cool, like he said at one point, to how he combines the old school with the new school kind of thing. Um, it made me think back to my days of baseball as a kid and even back to when my great-grandfather actually played in the majors. And uh, it was really cool hearing all he had to say about it. Um, and it really makes me now want to buy some Mitchell Bat Company merchandise. So he's a really oh, yeah. good guy. And, uh, yeah, y'all, y'all are really going to like his story. It's, it's really cool. Um, so, yeah, very inspiring. Well, to not keep you guys waiting any longer, without any more further ado, here is our interview with Jeremy Mitchell of Mitchell Bat Company. Check it out. Glad to have you on this episode. Uh, thanks for hopping on. Yeah, man. Thanks for, thanks for asking me. Oh, definitely. Um, so um, just to kind of get us started here, um, Tell us just a little bit about yourself for, for those who may not be familiar and, um, and yeah, just kind of uh, what you're all about. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a Jeremy Mitchell uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, born and raised in the volunteer state, uh, big baseball fan, obviously, uh, father of three little girls, uh, married to my wife, Kathy, um, who's from Iowa, almost uh, 14 years. And uh, I've been running Mitchell Bat Co. for seven years. And prior to that, uh, I was in advertising for a good maybe 12 years or so. So uh, the way I found out about you was, for those who, who were listening and watching, um, I saw Jeremy uh, speak at Circles Conference last year, uh, almost a year ago from right now. Yeah, nice. Um, at a Circle Conference in Dallas. So. Uh, which was awesome. We got to hear his story. We got to hear about Mitchell Bat Company. And um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what brought us here today. Uh, and my first question is, how, how has this year been, you know, since since Circle Conference? Like, how has this year been with all the quarantine and everything for you uh, and your family and then even, even like the business? Yeah, you know, I tell you what, uh, it's we've been busy this year. Um, every, it seems like every month has seemed like it's like, uh, Christmas orders. Um, so just like too many bats in the queue to even, uh, try to take care of. And so I'm getting bats out as fast as I can, but, uh, yeah, I think that the, the effect of the quarantine has made people, uh, surf the web more, um, look at my website more, you know, follow my brand and, uh, people that have wanted a Mitchell bat for a long time they are, they're buying it this year. And so, uh, I haven't really seen any, um, negativity, um, because of quarantine, it's been po very positive. Well, that's really good to hear. I know for me personally, I've purchased quite a few things just online in general, and then even yeah. the mutual back company stuff. So yeah. like, it's, it's done well for, for online retailers for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just one of those things where it's, it's shifting everyone's habits um over right. this time, like what how they purchase things how uh, the consumer behaves and so that's really interesting to hear that that is just you know it's picking up business and, and that's good to hear 
especially for, you know, local businesses and small businesses right now, um, they need that. Uh, and having your online store is really, I'm sure, helping out uh, greatly. For sure. Yeah, I see those. I see that Nashville Sounds hat in the back. Oh, yeah. Right here and right here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Thank you for that. I can't stop buying hats. Like, that's <laughs> one of my hobbies through all this is just keep buying hats. Yep. <laughs> Same here. So with the quarantine, um, we've kind of been in this weird um, MLB season. So baseball was obviously delayed for like almost half of the regular season. And we've gotten this like abbreviated version, which we're lucky to get it seems, but at the same time, it just flew by like in a blink of an eye. So what was your like whole reaction to this? And then like, what, what have you thought of this season and kind of moving forward? Yeah, this season's been crazy. Um, I can kind of back this up to, to answer your question, back to, back to winter meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, so winter meetings happens every December. Um, and you know what winter meetings are. Most of your listeners probably do. Um, but winter meetings is where everybody kind of gets together, all the teams, all the owners, all the GMs, managers, sometimes players, they get together and they talk uh, and they negotiate the next season. And there was back in December, I swear, there was a there was a interview with Anthony Rizzo on MLB Network. And they were talking about arbitration or salary or something. And the look in his eye, like the look in his um, look on his face when he was talking, I was like, we're going to, we're not going to have a season this year. And I, I knew it. And I, but I thought it was going to be about salary. I thought it was going to be like a salary strike. Right. Um, back in, you know, the mid nineties, this happened uh, 94, 95. Like there was a strike and it, it crushed me for a long time. It, it, it took me 10 years to get back to baseball the game that I love. It took me 10 years to even watch a game. Cause I was, I was in high school. I was devastated. Michael Jordan was playing baseball and <laughs> you know, every, every little kid was wanting Michael Jordan to go pro. And I, me and a lot of other people blame the baseball strike on Michael Jordan, not playing. Wow. So, so this December winter meetings, I was like, this is weird. We're not going to have a season. And then um, come spring training, you know, the season is about to start. And at the time, uh, my stepbrother played for the, uh, in the Angels organization. He's a pitcher. And my parents and I were, were going to fly to see him play at spring training. And before I could even buy the tickets out there, they canceled spring training. And wow. I was like, this is crazy. Um, and then, you know, they delayed opening day and they kept kind of teasing it. And uh, it was just it was, I was devastated again, just like when I, in the nineties, when, when there was no season, there was a baseball strike. It, I kind of had the same sort of feeling that I did back then. And, um, it was it, only 60 games, you know, and postseason was weird, uh, with the, the playoff structure. And even right now, today, right now, as we're talking, mm-hmm. um, you know, the Astros are, are playing. I'm actually surprised you being in Texas, we're, we're doing this during the Astros game. Oh, well, so for me, I grew up a Rangers fan, so okay. So you're like, Psh, I don't even care. I mean, like, if we if I have to go for a Texas team, it will be Rangers or Astros. But like the way yeah. I was raised and like all the games growing up was going out to Dallas and, yep. and Arlington and watching the Rangers play. But yeah, it's it's been weird this season, and mostly, um, you know, the only professional baseball team in, in Nashville is the Nashville Sounds, mm-hmm. and we go to probably you know a dozen games. There you go about a dozen games and um, that was canceled. And by now I would have probably been to probably six different MLB game, MLB stadiums. um, Just the way my travel schedule was last year. Um, I got to go see a lot of, a lot of different stadiums. And so it's, it's, it's strange to not have that Mm -hmm. uh, looking back on the, on this past year to not have that. Oh, definitely. Like I, I go to, concerts a lot and see a lot of bands that I love and go to this and that event well all of that is like just completely shifted you know just so it's so it's weird not having I think only went to maybe two concerts this year at the beginning of the year before the shutdown and and so the rest of this year has just felt so weird but they've but they've kind of come up with these virtual concerts which kind of filled that void just a little bit um, right. which I've, I've enjoyed those pretty well but it's just not the same as like being there and same thing with baseball no. like not going to the games, uh, it's gotta be such a weird feeling. Right. 
And I'm super bummed because, you know, the Braves are in the playoffs right now and them being only three and a half hours away, I, I probably would have made my way down there uh, in the stadium. And now they're playing in Arlington. So it's, mm-hmm. or the, yeah, Arlington. So it's, there's, there's, that's not a quick, quick drive up and back or right. down and back. Well, I've thought about going because that's, that's a hop and <laughs> skip away for me, but, uh, yeah. but I'm surprised that they're actually opening it up for people to come watch the games. I now. know. It's like they finally yeah. let you – it's like could we have done this the whole time or – you I know. know. <laughs> it makes crazy. you wonder. Yeah. I had tickets to the Indy 500, and they postponed that from May to August. And then a week before the race, they announced that um, – or a month before the race, they announced that fans are going to be allowed in uh, 25% capacity. And I was like, sweet, I'm going to the Indy 500. And then a week before they – canceled all the fans and so we were just devastated wow so i think i think it'll bounce back yeah a similar thing happened to me i was supposed to go to disneyland with uh some family and literally the day before we were supposed to leave was the day that they had closed down back in march so that was just like the like the weirdest thing it's like we were ready to go and then they're like boom it's closed and so it's just okay, that was our vacation for the year, and, so, and, and now we're stuck at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. All right. Well, um, so talking about the season, who do you got for the playoffs and the World Series? So I would say the Braves, but they somehow lost today to the Dodgers like 1,000 to 1. Oh, yeah. uh, they scored like 15 runs or 11 runs in the first inning, but – I would love to see the Braves and Tampa Bay oh, in yeah. the World Series. It's I think a, the whole – Such a different matchup. Oh, yeah. I think the Astros situation with them cheating, um, <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to see them in there, you know, for that. And mm-hmm. they, I, think the, the, I think the Rays are hungry. The Braves are hungry. I think it'll be – I think it'll be if a World Series similar to 2016 when the Cubs and the, and the Indians were both in it and they had – you know, the Cubs hadn't won in forever – the Indians haven't won since 1940 or something like that. And, and so I think it's Tampa Bay versus Atlanta would be a blast. Oh, um, definitely. I'm just sad they're not going to be in Atlanta. Cause I would, I would be there for it, but. Oh, Oh yeah. And, and yeah, the Astros, like everybody's kind of rooting against them. Now, if it would have been like the early 2000s Astros, I'd be all over it, you know, with the killer bees yeah. and everything like that was, that was my favorite Astros team. Um, and then and then I've kind of bounced around. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of I'll start out as a Rangers fan growing up, going to those games and watching players like Rusty Greer, Rafael Palmeiro, um, yep. and, and guys like All that. Right. And, and then kind of transitioned and kind of widened my, um, my fan, fan base a little bit to some of the other Texas teams and, and then the Red Sox and some of those uh, heavy hitters. And um, r- lately, like, I was, I was kind of on, on the Yankee train going into playoffs and, and most of the year, like I watched the first game back against the Red Sox. That was fun until it got cut off early. <laughs> and that was kind of like, it's kind of like set the whole tone. It's like, this is, this is what we get in 2020. We get half a baseball game, you know, and yeah. it, was, it was just so odd, but that, that's who I had my, my bets on in the beginning. But then now I'm kind of yeah. looking towards the, the Braves um, going all the way for, for this one. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I, before the before the Yankees and Cubs were out, I was dying for a, a Cubs Yankees matchup. That would have been fun. I still can't believe the Marlins beat them, but yeah, the Marlins came out of nowhere this year and just like hung in there for the longest time. I'm like, yep. I have never seen this before, and it I think it's been like since 2000 since they've even been in playoffs, and then they were in the World right. Series and. Um, back when they were still uh, just the Florida Marlins. And so that's, yep. that's crazy how long it's been since they've been in the conversation. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll move on to the brand spotlight section. So this is where you get to shine and kind of tell us um, a lot about Mitchell Bat Company, the, your story, and the kind of the journey that you've been on um, since you started. So um, I, I heard your, um, you know, launch now, presentation and, and that was a great thing you should totally check that out for those listening um he goes into depth in, de- in depth with a lot of uh different events that he's gotten to be a part of but um i'm gonna let him share with y'all um kind of 
where this all started and where it's kind of taken him. So go ahead. Yeah. So it, uh, it, it started in 2013. Um, so you know, seven years ago. Um, but it really started in 1988. <laughs> it's kind of where the start, the story begins. So, sure. so, uh, for the next three hours, uh, I will, uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. So yeah, all kidding aside, 1988, uh, I'm 10 years old. Uh, and I didn't collect baseball cards at the time. And, and a buddy of mine, Jason Hargrove, he's a, you know, my best friend in third grade. He, at his house one day, he like shows me his baseball card collection and he shows me a Daryl Strawberry rookie card. And I knew about Daryl Strawberry because of the 1986 World Series. And you should go back and watch it on YouTube, the whole thing. It's, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, but the, there, was a, there was a big event in, this, in game six and the Mets ended up pulling it off and then they won in game seven. So I knew about Daryl Strawberry. And he, Jason showed me his Gerald Strawberry rookie card. And as soon as he, I saw that card, I was hooked. And I wanted baseball cards for like every birthday, every Christmas, all the money that I ever had. I, I bought wax packs, um, Upper Deck, you know, in 80, 89 when that came out. And so I've just been a huge baseball collector, um, baseball cards and baseballs. And, uh, you know, I would love to read stories about Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle. And so there, there's like a history the history aspect of baseball and then the current side of, of baseball at the, at the time I was a kid and I played baseball. So it was just like a, this trifecta of just loving the sport and, you know, fast forward to being an adult. Um, like I said before, it took me 10 years after the strike in the nineties to come back to baseball. And when I came back, I came back like full force. Like we were going to Wrigley uh, for birthdays and, you know, traveling to go see the Reds play and the Braves. And so I was kind of, I was kind of back into it. And in conjunction with that, like prior to Mitchell Batco, um, I worked in advertising and I kind of still do. Um, And so I had, you know, in 2013, at, at that point I had done everything from like print design to web design, to video editing, to, um, podcasting wasn't really big, but I, but I was recording audio for, for video, um, building apps. Um, I'd started, I'd started a, a company, um, like a startup, just a, a product. And so I, I had, I had his, had a history of starting things in 2013 and I, had, and I had a history of being able to just make stuff on the computer all by myself. Um, and I have a marketing degree. And so all of that combined with just like this, uh, you know, a thousand ideas a day wanting to start something and, you know, me telling my wife like, Hey, what if there was a, Hey, what if we did? And it's like all these different ideas. And, and so, um, August, 2013, we were about to have our second baby girl. We have, we have three girls now. And I get this email, um, from kind of an internet friend named Brad Davis and Brad is a designer and he's kind of in the circles of the people that I admire. And Brad sends me this email and he said, Hey, um, we, I've, I've created this team of designers and we are going to rebrand, um, this skateboard company uh, in Nashville called Salem town board co. And we want you to, to do the website and we want you to do a video for us. And it's all free. It's all pro bono. Um, so you won't get paid but it's, it'll be a fun experience for you, I think. And he named off all the people that were going to do it. Um, and it's like Matt Lehman, uh, Matt Lehman designed my logo and I'm, I was a big fan of Matt Lehman still am Tom Okerson and these other guys, you know, that were going to be a part of this Micah Smith. And, um, so I agreed. And at the time, like I said, like we were about to have a baby in like a month at this time. And I was taking on just tons of freelance. I was building websites at night, uh, editing video at night and just doing all these projects to just try to like stockpile cash before I was going to be out of, out of commission for a while because of uh, not sleeping. And (laughs) so on top of all of that, I agreed to do this like really big free project. And I'm really glad I did because doing that project and being, being at the skateboard um, shop and seeing them work with their hands and uh, build skateboards out of wood and paint stripes on the skateboards and like build everything with their hands. I, I was like, man, I wish this is what I've been missing. 
like mm-hmm. making something, like getting my hands dirty, because everything that I had created the last like decade was all on a computer, all clicking a mouse, but nothing had I created was made by me, by my hands. And so um, did that project, that was August of 2013, completed it, launched it, and then it was a, you know, loved, you know, my favorite projects I've ever worked on. And, but I was left with this void of like wanting to start something like, like Salem town, something that's made of wood, something that's, I can paint. And with me being a huge baseball fan that, you know, of course is baseball bats. And Mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I I don't know how to make a bat. I don't know where to get a bat, but I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start with just sketching. And so I took out my field notes, uh, shout out Aaron Draplin, uh, one of my <laughs> yeah. favorite dudes. Oh yeah. And started just drawing these baseball bats and I have, I still have the field notes, field notes. It's like my prized possession, you know, this is where it all started. And I would draw these baseball bats one after the other with different stripe patterns. Um, and I would just like draw it really fast and just flip the page and draw another one. And I started posting those on Instagram. I don't even know why I did this. This is like, this is kind of back when Instagram, when like, when you posted something, everybody saw it. It wasn't the, you know, the crazy algorithms and stuff. Right, the good old them. days. The good old days. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just back sure. in my day. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I started posting that on my personal Instagram and I really, looking back, like I really don't even know why I did that because I, I wasn't starting a, a bat company. I had no idea how to, how to start a bat company if I even wanted to. And close friends were asking me like, Hey, what are these bats? These are cool looking. And they were just really just sketches. And um, I'm just like, I'm just messing around. And then people started um, like strangers were like, Hey, these look really cool. I want to, I want to maybe if you make this a real thing, like I'll, I'll be your first customer. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not starting a bat company. Like everyone calm down. And (laughs) So like the more and more like, you know, messages I would get like that, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take these into Photoshop and I'm going to make these look like real bats or like renderings. Mm -hmm. And so I took them into Photoshop and made them look real. And looking back on them, they're just terrible mock-ups. Like I'm like almost embarrassed of them, but it got the point, it got the point across that um, these are decorative bats with, with stripes on them. And for whatever reason, it, it sparked something in a lot of people. And then I was getting emails from people and they're like, I want to buy a bat. Like I want to buy this. And so I was like, this is crazy. I can't believe this. I've, I've like, I've had so many dumb ideas and I've launched them and I've spent time and effort like launching things that never got off the ground. And for whatever reason, this thing, this stuck. And, and so, um, you gotta give the people what they want, you know? All right. I know. Supply <laughs> and demand. So I told my wife the idea. This, this was now fast forward. So from August to, from August to uh, October is kind of when I was kind of ideating on the idea. And I kind of had a rough, rough idea of like how I can pull this off. And so I talked to the guys at Salem town. I was like, I have an idea. I kind of made a mood board of like, all these different things like there's hatchets, there's axes, um, there's, there's boat paddles, there's canoes that are, that are painted up with stripes, but, but nobody was doing baseball bats. And so I felt like there was a kind of a hole in the market. And, and so Jacob Henley is the guy that started Salem Town Board Co., the skateboard company. And I, and I told him this idea. I had a kind of a presentation, you know, at his shop and I, I showed him the, the PDF or whatever of my ideas. And he looked at, looked at it. He looked at me and he said, Jeremy, you're going to put your kids through college with this idea. And I was like, no, 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 you're, you got the, no, that's not, there's no way. Like this is impossible. And he goes, no, I think this is a really good idea. I think you should really pursue this. And so I'm like, all right. Um, and I told another mentor of mine, um, I told him the idea and I, and I said, oh, what do you think? Is this crazy? Like, I, I don't even know how to do this. I don't know how to, I don't know how to paint stripes on a baseball bat. I don't even know where I'm going to get the bats. I watched one YouTube video on how to make a baseball bat and I, I turned it off like two minutes in. I'm like, well, I can't do that because I know nothing about woodworking. And the more and more people that I told, I told everybody, everybody at my job, I told, you know, 
longtime friends that haven't talked to in a while. I was like, this is, I feel like I'm, I'm, I feel led to do this. This uh, it's just like a, it's pulling me to do this. And so around October, um, I told my wife the idea and I said, I want to put stripes on, on baseball bats. And she said, how? And I said, I don't know. And she said, well, why don't you wait until after Christmas to do this? And because we just had a baby in, in August, so we, had, we weren't sleeping. I had a brand new job working at this ad agency that I'd always wanted to work for. Uh, life was stressful. And she said, why don't you wait till after Christmas and let things slow down? And I said, okay, all right, that's, that's probably a good idea. And fast forward to a couple of weeks after that conversation, I'm watching game six of the World Series and it's Red Sox versus Cardinals. Mm -hmm. And the Red Sox had won a World Series like a couple of years prior to that, 2008, I believe. But for some reason, this World Series was like all over the news. It was like a lot of people were talking about baseball and baseball was top of mind. I think for the entire country, if not the world, it was just one of those seasons that they just spun the story in a way that was romantic. It was exciting. And I'm watching this game and it's like the seventh inning stretch. And I'm thinking about the bat company and I didn't have the URL, didn't have a website, didn't have anything. I had these, I had these like really bad mock-ups of these bats and it's the seventh thing stretch. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just like buy that URL on my phone, like during this commercial break, no big deal. <laughs> and so I buy the URL, couple of, couple of, you know, the couple of uh, bats happen in the seventh inning. And I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just like spin up a quick website? No big deal. Like nobody's even going to see this. It's just stupid. I can't believe I'm even thinking about this. And so I, so I created a website like right there on my phone and um, hooked the URL up to it. Uh, and then I was like, well, I might as well like hook the PayPal account up and just in case like someone buys one, they'll have a way to pay for it. And I'm like, what do I even charge? I don't even know what I even charge these things. And I, I was like $90, you know, a hundred, I don't even know mm -hmm. what to charge. And so I had, I had two bats on the site and one was St. Louis Cardinals colors and stripes. And one was like Boston Red Sox. So they were all navy and red and white. And I had two bats and and I had a I kind of had a logo already because my because Matt Lehman, um, my logo designer, he he had already designed um like a personal brand logo for me. It's just Jeremy Mitchell and it's like a script and the Mitchell's in the bottom. And so in, in talking to my wife like a couple of days prior, you know, because I had bring I, I would bring it up and she was like, Don't do this until after Christmas. And um I was like, well, what should I call it? And um, I was like, should I call it Nashville something? I don't even know. And um, so, so my wife was like, why don't you call it Mitchell Batco? Because you already, you already have that, that Mitchell part of your name, the script in your logo. So just take off the Jeremy and adjust the M a little bit. And then there's your Mitchell. And then just type Mitchell, just type Bat Company underneath. And there you go. There's your logo. A little and it was, it was just, Yeah, it was just like... <laughs> and done and so created that and so I so all I had at launch was a URL a very basic website a cobbled together logo and very poor uh, mock-ups and so I launched the website and at the, simultaneously I launched the Instagram account and I launched it and there was almost like this like wave of like, get ready, come over me. Um, and like, I was watching the game and you know, David Ortiz was coming out of the dugout wearing a, wearing a military helmet. Like it was, they were just partying already in Boston and the game wasn't even over. And, uh, and so I'm finding people on Instagram that were at the game. So they, this is what Instagram newly released the geo tagging. So you, you could like tag where you are. Oh yeah. And so I was finding people at Fenway Park. Um, I was searching the um, hashtag Red Sox, and I was 
uh, you know, messaging these people, DMing them and liking their photos and commenting and people were commenting back. And I got like probably a hundred followers, like just like in the first like 30 minutes of me That's doing so this. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so through the website, you could, you could create discount codes. And so I was creating like free shipping discount codes and giving them out to people on these bats that like didn't even exist. And I put on the website that it would take six to eight weeks to, to get a bat. Cause I figured I did the math. I was like, okay, if someone buys one tonight, then I'll have two months to figure it out. Well, the Red Sox won in Boston. I created a bat company in Nashville and four days later, someone bought a bat <laughs> and I'll never forget. Um, I was sitting at my dining room table and I get this noise come on my phone that I hadn't heard before. And uh, it was from the app that it was like a big cartel app or whatever. And it was like a, the cash register sign, uh, you know, sound. It was like cha-ching. And um, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. I was, like, hear. <laughs> I was like, what was that? And um, someone bought a bat sure enough. And uh, I seriously couldn't believe it. And I'll never forget that, that moment. And it was seriously like every day for that whole, that whole Christmas season from October 30th or like, you know, beginning of November when we've made our first sale to well after Christmas, we were still selling bats Wow! and, um, it, and it hasn't stopped like seven years later, like it, the amount of like, um, just the amount of amazing people that have poured into this, um, people like yourself that, that care about my story and that are fans. Um, it's, it's just, it's, I can't even describe it. Like it's, it, it makes me feel, um, purposeful. I don't know. Like it's just, it's, it's neat to, to have something that, that I created kind of like out of nowhere, um, stick and people still love it. And, and I don't know why. Um, it's just, it's special. It's, it's real special. That's definitely a blessing because not everybody gets to like launch a, a company and then just like see it come into fruition that quickly. Like I'm, I'm just amazed that like it was the last game of the series. You launch it and post baseball season, people are wanting these bats. Yeah. You know, cause typically like, especially right now, um, everybody's looking at football. Like they're, they're kind of, you know, checking that out now and they're kind of zoning out of, of baseball, but like, the fact that it's like baseball's over, but you know, this whole wave of, of Mitchell bat company starts and just like takes the, takes the whole world by a storm. It's, it's crazy to think that that, 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 that happened that way, you know, it wasn't at the beginning yeah. of the season it was at the very end and people had an interest in wanted bats. That right. Way. That's, that's yeah. just so wild. The timing, um, and it makes the story all so much cooler because it's like, you know, you've, you've had all this anticipation and build up, and then it's like, it happens, baseball is over. And then it's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. I haven't thought of it that way, but yeah, that's, that's a cool way to, cool way to say it. And then uh, I remember you speaking on um, some, some collaborations. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about those and what that was kind of like, cause, cause that's kind of like the next step it seems from, from this yep. point of the story. Yeah, the first first collaboration we did, um, some of some of these early ones are kind of foggy, and I'm and I'm trying to remember. I can't remember if it was Ebbets or if it was Ralph Lauren, who was who was first. But Ebbets, I had I had a list of people that I, that I wanted to reach out to, um, to tell them about Mitchell Bad and to see if they wanted to collaborate. And the three people on that list was uh, Ebbets Field Flannels, uh, John Contino, and Leatherhead Sports, mm -hmm. and what's funny is they is John reached out on Instagram just on in a comment. And I was like, I've been a John Cantino fan before John Cantino. Like <laughs> I've been a fan for so long and he's like, Hey, I want to collaborate on a bat. And, um, and then Abbott's kind of the same way. I can't remember if it was an email from Lisa Cooper, uh, the co-founder, or if it was a through Instagram, I can't remember how, how it happened, but, um, we ended up talking on the phone for like two hours uh, right after I started and just to, to be able to, to be able to have a conversation with Lisa 
from Ebbets, the way that I, the way that we did, um, was just super, just phenomenal, you know, because Ebbets, Ebbets Full Flannels has been around for almost, you know, over 30 years now. And she was like, I love the bats. I'd love to get some in our store. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is, this is crazy. And, and at the time we only had 11 different designs. Like now we have like a hundred and something and the original 11 designs, I painted up you know, the original 11 and shipped them out to Seattle. And they, they were in their store for until they until they recently, their store closed for a minute. But, um, to be it, to be represented inside the coolest baseball store in, in the world, uh, is, is something else. And then Ralph Lauren kind of the same way. Like I get an email from, from, uh, someone from Ralph Lauren and the email was basically like, Hey, uh, I want to hop on a phone call with you. Um, because we, we possibly want to carry your bats in our spring, <laughs> in our spring, um, collection. Could you hop on a call with us? And so I, of course, yes. And so Ralph Lauren, um, the guy on the phone was, was like, yeah, these, these bats came to us yesterday. Um, we found out about you yesterday and we have to have them. And, and he's, and I said, how did you hear about us? And, um, and I say us, it was just me, you know, me, my wife, you know, and I said, how'd you hear about Mitchell Batco? And he said, it came from a reliable source. And I was like, what does that mean? And, uh, you know, he just kind of kept talking and, and I asked him again and, and, um, he was like, it, it's, it's a reliable source. And, and I was like, am I in trouble? Like, is this the FBI? Like what, what who's your source? And, um, he said, uh, David Lauren was, was gifted a bat. And so David Lauren is Ralph Lauren's son. Uh, oh so my gosh. So David Lauren is, is married to Lauren Lauren, uh, Lauren Bush, uh, George W. Bush's daughter. So they're, you know, they're big time. Yeah, and that's a connection. <laughs> so someone, so I went back to try to figure out like who in the world bought David Lauren a, a bat. And there was like a, a New York, New York, like Manhattan um, address. And I was like, that's gotta be it. And it was like, I didn't know the person's name. And so someone bought him a, a Mets colored Mitchell bat and he saw it and he said, I gotta have it. I gotta have these in my store. And wow. so we, we, we negotiated a price and, um, I feel like that's when that was probably, um, April of 2014. So I'd only been doing it for like five months. And what's crazy is like when a company like Ralph Lauren wants to work with you, like you, you kind of grow up really fast in the startup world and mm -hmm. you learn a lot of things. And, um, they're talking about, you know, having like a, you know, a $5 million insurance policy and all this legal stuff that I had to, had to do. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And it was, uh, it was a lot of back and forth. And, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, our, our bats were right there in, in the store. And, and so Paul Cunningham from Leatherhead Sports, like his footballs were in this collection along with my bats. And so I've gotten to know Paul um, from Leatherhead Sports. Are you familiar with Leatherheads? Yes. Yeah. The footballs and the baseballs and stuff. And so he's been a mentor of mine since, since really the beginning, because, um, yeah, this was like two weeks after I launched, I get an email from ESPN, uh, and they wanted to, they're asking me if, if I wanted to be in their holiday gift guide for black Friday. And this was literally 14 days after I started it. And I, I don't know how they found me. I don't know how they saw my website and thought it was even anything legitimate. <laughs> and, and so ESPN emails me and they want it, you know, to be, to feature us on their, on their site. And he was like, just send us high res photos, <clears throat> excuse me, send us high res photos of your, of your products and we'll feature them on black Friday. And I didn't have high res photos. I mean, the bats were barely, I barely started even painting them. And so I took a couple of customer bats and took them out to my driveway and laid out some like white poster board and, sit on a ladder and took a picture with my DSLR and, um, sent them those pictures. And, uh, that's, I think that was kind of when I was like, okay, this, this is going to get nuts, like, mm -hmm. like strap on because this is going to get crazy. 
and this whole time, you know, I have a brand new job, uh, and you know, a brand new baby. And I was staying up till like two in the morning. Like I would come home, you know, at five o'clock, I'd eat dinner. So I would work on the bats from like 6 PM to like 2 AM. And then I would sleep for like three hours and then get back up and just paint until I had to leave for work. And then every, every day, like during Christmas break, like during the Christmas, you know, shopping time, that's what I was doing just, just to maintain, like to get the orders out the door. And, uh, looking back, like that was like, I mean, borderline a nightmare, uh, to be honest, like it was, it was pretty bad. Like there was, there was bats kind of like everywhere, like every corner of our house. And we don't have a huge house, you know, we it, we're just in the suburbs of Nashville, spray painting bats, you know, and having them dry in various tubs across the, the house. There was bats in our baby beds, uh, you know, in our cribs, under our piano, like in the dining room, stuff was being stored like in our cars, um, boxes and shipping and all this stuff. Like I was going to the post office like every single day. Uh, I didn't have a, I didn't have a really good system down to be honest. Like I should have, I should have done it so differently, but you know, it's, it, it's very serendipitous how it all kind of yeah. came down um, and very scrappy and I'm still scrappy. Um, it's, it's still a very lean um, operation and uh, it's, it, it's fun to talk to you and it's fun to, to think back on all this because it kind of happened about right now, like <laughs> seven years ago, about right now, I was thinking about starting a bat company and um, you know, here we are seven years later. Yeah, I'm sure it's flown by and like, you know, especially when it hit the next level with some of those bigger brands, it just like went into overdrive and it's just kind of, you know, you just keep hustling, you keep going and you, you almost don't get a chance to kind of pump the brakes and kind of reflect, you know, yeah. you're like, this is all happened. I mean, even me at the beginning, beginnings of my career as a creative, like all the things that have happened, you know, this whole like world shut down that we've had has kind of allowed me to kind of reflect on my, my past seven years and, yeah. and kind of where I want to head next and, and things like that. So I'm, I'm sure that's a really interesting uh, situation for you to be in, especially, you know, being seven years out of this now. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to stop and reflect. I did two weeks ago, I did go camping by myself and that was, that was fun to just like sit in silence, not work on anything, uh, not watch, uh, my, not watch my phone, just like literally just like a campfire by myself in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it's, it's, I recommend everybody doing that. Oh, yeah. uh, just get away from it, get away from it all and just reflect and, you know, think about nothing. And I have, I haven't done that. I haven't just literally spaced out in a long time. And be able to think I'm seven years into a bat company. Yeah. <laughs> Full yeah time. It's crazy. And, and what, what point did you, cause you mentioned you were working in an, another job. What time did this, at what point did this become full time for you? Yeah. So that journey has been kind of off and on. So in, in, in 2015, um, at the end of 2015, I was laid off from my dream job and I was devastated and I had a shop at the time, you know, I had, um, I had a space to go and, and, and paint. And I remember, um, losing my job and emptying my office out and moving that all to my other office and I like it was eight o'clock in the morning on a Monday it was actually Columbus Day we just celebrated Columbus Day so it was it was like Columbus Day and I lost my job at eight o'clock a.m. on a Monday that's a that's not a great place to be especially with two two little ones and uh, and one on the way another one a third on the way right and and so I um went to my office and I was like okay the I got, well, I got bats to paint. And so I'm just going to, today I'm going to paint these bats and I'll look for a job tomorrow. And then tomorrow came and I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to paint these bats and I'm going to, I'm going to email some people and get some freelance or I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just going to like take care of this, take care of these bat orders that are out, outstanding. And so, cause it was, you know, sh Christmas shopping, we're right in the middle of Christmas season, basically right now. And, um, I did that for, 
it was, it was probably like eight months or so. Like I was just like working, working full time for the back, you know, doing Mitchell bat full time. And I remember like when it happened, like when I lost my job, um, people were sending me like LinkedIn messages and DMS and texts and like, congratulations. Uh, now you can go and pursue your dream. <laughs> and, um, I was like, yeah, I don't know. It isn't, I don't think a congratulations is in order. I, I kind of need a job. Like I kind of need some money, <laughs> something mm -hmm. steady, I got, you know, three kids and a mortgage and picket fence and the ketchup fights and all the stuff. And that, that yeah, point, you're yeah. just a few years into the business and, and you haven't really seen the longevity just yet. So I'm sure yeah. that's kind of another spot in your mind. Yeah. So, so two years, that was like, I was two years into it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I was going to my shop every day. I was getting there at like seven o'clock in the morning and I was, you know, t-shirt basketball shorts uh, every day and sitting in my little office by myself quietly. Um, I realized like, I, I don't think I like this. <laughs> I don't think I want to, I don't think I need to do this full time. Like this is not who I'm supposed to be. Um, I miss people. And I miss the the vibe of a of an office and a company and just that 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 buzz that you get on a Monday morning staff meeting and you know you're with your team and you're 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 building something that's bigger than yourself. And that's really, everybody right now, <laughs> you know, in this I know. <laughs> yeah, I miss my office, you know, and all those people. It's, so, yeah, it's funny how the parallels, you know, t-shirt, gym shorts, and the office, and yep, missing the, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. And so I, I did that, I did that long enough. Like, I, I think I, I was like, okay. And I would, I would email, um, I would email agencies, you know, that could, could hire me to work remote if they will, if they needed me. And I felt like I had more to give. Like I, I wasn't done. Like I, I, the job was not done. Me, me losing my job at this ad agency. Um, I, I missed the office vibe and and I missed the steady paycheck, to be honest. Like, and so I got a, I got another job and I was a contractor and I was like, well, if, I, if I'm a contractor, then I can just like kind of come and go as I please. And then, you know, they offered me a job to, to stay. Um, they offered me like a associate creative director position to like run a team. And I was like, man, I, I can't really pass this up. And so I joined that, I joined that team and was there for three years or so and got headhunted out of, of that company into another company. And so I don't, I don't know that Mitchell Batco needs to be my full-time job for it to be a success. And I think, a, I think a lot of people think that it is my full-time job, um, but, it's, but it's not, and it's not, not right now. It's mm -hmm. not for now. And, and I think I'm very thankful for my full-time job, um, especially during a global pandemic. Um, you know, I am thankful for that Mitchell Bat has survived this pandemic, and it's it really has been a, a lot of work this year um, to get to get orders out the door. Um, I think a lot of companies that that weren't affected by COVID have realized like let's take care of our team, and and a lot of people have have ordered you know twenty five Mitchell Bats uh, you know with their logo on it and to give out to their sales team. Um, their, their all-star, um, sales quarter goals are made, or, you know, they, a, a company member that has like knocked it out of the park, they want to give them a Mitchell bat. And so I've seen a, I've seen an uptick in, in corporate sales this year, because I think that there's a lot of companies out there that, that weren't affected by, by COVID for, for whatever reason, maybe they're in healthcare or maybe they're service, the military, like the stuff that's not going to go away. Right. Um, they, they, they want Mitchell bats and, mm -hmm. and I'm here to paint them. And I think that, you know, there, I go back and forth between like living the dream of like, Oh man, wouldn't it be so awesome if, if Mitchell bat was my full-time job, but you know, how cool would that be? But I think, you know, what's cool. It's, it's cool to take care of your family. It's cool to, you know, allow, not allow, but it, it's, you know, my wife is a stay at home mom. And she does freelance too. And, and I think, that, you know, nine years ago, we made that decision. You know, when we had our first baby, um, I was a freelancer working from home, doing websites and videos and everything. And 
again, looking back on that time, like I, I wasn't happy. Like I was, I'm not happy being at home by myself clicking a mouse. Um, yeah. And so she worked and I was freelancer and then we switched. So she, I, she came home and I went to back into the workforce. And um, I think for now, that's what it, that's what it is. And I think that I'm growing something. Mitchell Bat is, is still growing. Like there's still ideas that, that we haven't touched on yet. Like there's still things that is still left to do. And maybe this is something that I get to do full time when I'm an old man. Yeah. You know, you know this is just year seven. You know, you're thinking, you know, at past year seven, you know, what, what it's going to look like. Is it still going to be part time or is it going to be that full time gig that kind of just, you know, this is it's still the, still developing and still it, that's really cool, though, to to hear you um, to share that journey because it's still going. It's it's not like you're, you know, retired and you're looking back on all this just yet. There's still so much to be done. And, and that's just oh, yeah. a cool, a cool energy to be in. Yeah. And, you know, it, it I I joke that I have two full time jobs. Um, because it is some, some weeks, some months, you know, I, I put in, I put in the hours, um, of a full-time position and that's not healthy. Like it's, right. it's not healthy. You know, 80 hours a week is not healthy. Um, and so it, it's hard for me to take breaks. Um, hence the, hence the solo, like running off into the woods camping trip that I took <laughs> that was really good for my soul. Um, but you know, I, I, I think that, um, I see this on LinkedIn a lot where people will have an announcement. They're like, Hey, I quit, I quit my job. Now I'm full time doing my, my side thing, whatever. And I read the comments and it's like, congratulations, go get them. And sometimes I wish I could be like, no, yeah. keep, your day, keep your day job. That's important. Like you can build your thing on the side. Like I don't think that there is this, um, this like, magical like pass over into working for the man into like doing your side hustle, side hustle because now like there's no safety net like there's <laughs> it's it's all you and if and if someone can can accomplish that um that hats off hats off to them but that's that's fantastic for them but for now um this is what this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm going to I'm going to grow the company for for long term um, I would, I would, I would almost hate it to depend on, um, Mitchell bat to, to do, do the things that I want to do for my kids and my wife. Um, I think it would put a lot of pressure, unneeded pressure on it. And, and I'm having a lot of fun right now and I, I want to continue that. So with, with it being still a side hustle kind of project, um, have you had a team kind of pull that load away from you sometimes where you're still running the business and and everything's kind of going as planned, but you have, you know, different team members building more bats, um, yeah. maybe even a warehouse or something like that. That's kind of mm -hmm. taking that burden from you. Yeah. I, I used to have that. Um, now it's just me. Hold on. Just hold on just a second. No problem. Yeah. So in 2015, so 2013 to 2015, I did everything, painted everything, shipped everything, sent out all the emails, sent, you know, posted everything on Instagram, showed up at the weekend markets when I was back when I was doing them by myself. And there um, came a point and I was doing it all in my house. And I remember this, it was a Sunday night at like two o'clock in the morning and I got to be at work in the next next day you know eight and so i i'm trying to finish the last thing i have to do is just ship this ship this bat box this bat up put a label on it and then i'm done for the the weekend and i could not find my tape dispenser <laughs> oh couldn't find it and two in the morning i'm tired I'm looking under every, I'm opening every, every drawer, every cart. I couldn't find my tape. And I was like, I cannot believe I can't find my stupid tape. And at that moment I was like, that's it. I quit. I'm out. 
And so I, I gathered everything that was Mitchell bat related and shoved it in the back of my car and went to bed. And I went to bed and the next morning I, I was like, I didn't quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mitchell. Bat. <laughs> I didn't mean it. And first breakup. <laughs> I know. I, so then I, I text um, my buddy Rob, who had been letting me use his like paint booth um, on the weekends. So I, I, I would paint during the week at the house. Then I would go to this uh, furniture shop. It was like this 200 year old building right behind Greer Stadium, um, where the Nashville Sounds used to play, uh, where I grew up watching the Nashville Sounds. So I would drive by the stadium every time to go into this shop. They donated their space to me like on the weekends, and it was awesome. But it was a lot of back and forth. And so I text Rob and uh, I was like, this is 20, this is 2015. This is like um, spring 2015 uh, prior to losing my job. And I texted Rob and I was like, I got to get out of my house, man. This is driving me crazy. I, I, I don't know where anything is anymore. There's bats everywhere. It's, it's driving everybody nuts for me to be here doing this stuff. I, I, I need to figure out like, some space that I can rent and he responded and he said um why don't you come down to the shop on Tuesday I have some time in the morning and we'll talk about it and so I, I went walked in there and he, it was like this really cool showroom if you if you go to my website like one of the hero images I think is is still there of, of my old shop mm -hmm. I've had two shops my first shop was in a 200 year old building and it was like um very photogenic, no air, no heat, and a lot of ghosts uh, <laughs> occupied that, that building. And so, um, so I walk into his showroom and there had been this other company that was like subletting like the showroom and uh, tall ceilings, you know, big windows. And uh, he was like, I want to, I want to give you this. And I was like, what do you mean? man? this is, this is way too much space. Like no way. And he goes, yeah, I'll rent this to you. I won't, I won't charge you a lot. Um, just move your stuff in and, and we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's, it's too much space. I, there's all I need is like a little Porter John. Like I don't, I don't need anything. And um, he's like, you'll fill it up. And he, he was very confident in that I would fill up the space with orders. And sure enough, I did. Like I had, I had a whole like system in place. It was perfect. It was, it was awesome. Except for the ghosts. And so there's this guy, his name is Skylar Anderson. He, him, or sorry, his brother and Jacob Henley started Salem Town Board Code. And that's how I met Skylar. And so Skylar and I would, would kind of end up at the same weekend markets. He, he sell, him selling skateboards, me selling bats. And uh, over Christmas in 2014, uh, we were at this pop-up shop on 12 South. And uh, he was, I was like, he was like, hey, let me know if you ever need help. And I was like, I need help. Like, I really do need help. And uh, he was like, okay, well, let me know. And it wasn't until I got the keys to that shop. It was a Saturday in 2015. I was in there walking, walking in my space for the first time. It was mine. I had a key to the building. And uh, I sit down. I'm just looking at the space. And I was like, oh, man, I wonder what Skylar's doing. And so I texted Skylar. And this was, a, this was a, like a four months ago conversation that I had. And I said, Hey, I have a shop now. Do you want to help me paint bats? And he said, what's the address? And he was there in like 30 minutes. Wow. And so he sat down, he and I were sitting across from, across from a, this old, like leather Ottoman, like just like on a folding chair. I and mean, it was so primitive. So two folding chairs and an Ottoman. And he, I, I, I roll a bat, you know, I tape up a bat with stripes and I was like, this is how you do it. You try. And so handed him an, a blank bat and he taped it. And I was like, no, scoot it in. You know, I was kind of coaching him a little bit and he rolled a bat and he showed it to me. He's like, check that out. And I've, I twisted it, you know, to see the stripes were not wobbly and it was perfect. His, his first one. And I had trained probably 20 family members to help me, no one could do this. Like no, like no one, they, they would give up after one stripe. Um, all my friends that were interested in helping me, cause like they were like, they knew I needed help, but they just didn't want to, or they didn't, they couldn't, or 
they just physically just like could not do the the work the right way and so Skyler I God bless him man he he was such a blessing because he took over like not at not if not not at first but eventually he took over a hundred percent of of all the bats that were that were ordered um in about a so that was tw- like four the four year span so 2015 to 2019 um for four years he painted bats for me and he he trained his brother he trained another guy to help and so there at the most i've ever had is three painters and when we did the collaboration with louisville slugger uh, we painted i think a hundred it was a hundred bats for the home run derby they they louisville slugger shipped me a hundred blank louisville slugger bats we painted them and shipped them back to louisville and then they added the logos and, and the, the clear coat, or whatever, and handed them out to a bunch of MLB players. Wow. So that, that was crazy. Like, um, we, I took off a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of time at work to do that one. And, um, so I had a full team there. Um, but Skyler recently, him and his wife took, went from zero to four foster kids. Um, and so now they have a house full of house full of, uh, teenage boys, uh, to take care of. So he's taking some time off. He didn't quit. I'm not going to let him quit. Um, <laughs> he's just, he's just taking some time off. And so now it's, now it's me doing it, doing it by myself again and um, kind of back to the basics. And there's a, there's a part of me that likes that because I feel like looking back at the last four years prior to me, prior to this year of me now I'm painting everything. Um, I kind of missed the reason why I started it in the first place was because I wanted to get my hands dirty mm-hmm. and, and then I hired a painter and I stopped, I stopped painting and um, I kind of, I kind of lost a, lost a part of the, the heart of, mm-hmm. of why it even exists in the first place. But um, I miss Skyler. I miss him a lot. And I, I hope that, I hope that we can figure out how we can come back. And I miss my shop. I, I closed my shop down um, at the beginning, at the, I sorry, at the beginning of this year. Um, so I brought it all back to the house and uh, just operating out of the house, keeping it lean, not paying rent, not paying workers. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a dream. My, my dream is to have a shop here at the house, um, like a, like a carriage house or a garage that's has air conditioning and heat and in in an office and uh, make it a, make it a home office kind of situation, but, uh, it's, I'm back to sitting on the couch and watching baseball and rolling bats on my ottoman, like a, like it started. So it seems that, um, the whole, like you doing it yourself, like there's, there's gotta be like a therapy to it. Like it's, it's, you know, like you were saying the hands on, uh, element to it, but I feel like there's like this therapy that's, that's helping you, get through life, you know, going back to paint the bats or, you know, whatever it is and yeah. keeping it in home and keeping it, you know, whether it's in, in like a shop uh, at your house kind of keeps it from becoming uh, that big massive corporation or that, that yeah. job that you would eventually maybe get burnt out on. But it's kind of like yeah. that, that thing that's always going to be there and kind of therapeutic. So there's, there's definitely to me, it seems like there's something about that. Yeah, there really is, Reese. I mean, uh, when I sit down to to tape a bat, the cool thing about it is is I know exactly what it's going to look like when it's done. Mm-hmm. It's the same reason why I like mowing my grass. Up and down, up and down until it's done, and then job well done. You can look back and like, ah, I just did that. And it gets, I mean, it gets repetitive at times, but um, it's coming from a you know, a day job where I'm in meetings a lot. I run, I lead a team, um, and I have to support my team. They have questions. I have questions. Um, I have an office with a door. Um, it's closed a lot of times. Sometimes it's not. Um, a lot of interruptions. Whereas with painting a bat, start to finish, like there there are no interruptions. Like I can't think about anything else except for making these stripes on this bat perfect. And when you're editing a video or building a website or writing copy for an email, your mind can, can wander. Like it can go in a million different directions and you can get sidetracked. But with, 
with a bat painting a bat this is that's what i what i realized early on is like oh this is like um this is good for me like this is this is good this like you said this is therapeutic like this is i can focus on one thing for just a little bit and then get back to like the scrambled eggs in my head of ideas later but it is it is a definitely a it's a mind shift and it's and it's interesting that it's like this this spontaneous venture that kind of popped up at like the right time in your life that's kind of just kind of there now and something to always go back to and then and then the whole work part of it it's you know if you really love it you know they say if you if you love what you do it's never work and so yeah. as long as it doesn't you know get too out of hand and it's and it's in your hands I feel like it will never feel like work and it'll be that. Yeah. Heavy. So that, yeah. that's always something to kind of go back to. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, um, if you still have some time, we uh, collected some questions here. Some of them may be longer answers or shorter answers, but I uh, thought it would be kind of fun to, um, to kind of bounce around those if you don't mind. Let's do it. All right. So, um, so doing a little bit of research on, on your story, I noticed um, two things that kind of like stood out is, is passion and nostalgia. Like to me, those two things were um, kind of radiating from your brand. What, what kind of helped you make those decisions of kind of letting those two things be the forefront uh, and kind of drive your decisions or, um, or things like that? Yeah, you know, I think that um, the the bats are a clear jumping off point from the uniforms that are on the field, and everybody sees those uniforms. Everybody looks at those uniforms, whether they are paying attention or not. Um, they're on the cover of every single baseball card they've ever seen. They're on the cover of every Beckett monthly they've ever seen. Um, and so for me, like collecting baseball cards, I think was more than just like a hobby. It was, it was almost like a case study. Like I'm, I'm looking at these designs of these jerseys, like Daryl Strawberry, uh, for instance, like orange, royal blue, white, pinstripe. And those, it's just a repetitive thing. Like you just see it over and over again. Like for, for me, it was, you know, 20 years, 20 plus years of, of looking at this. Um, and so it, it was, it, it was a natural, it was kind of natural for me to, to translate that over into a design of a bat and lucky for me and everyone else, like it look it looks great. It looks cool. It looks like it's something that, that belongs to every baseball fan. Mm -hmm. And, and there's millions of baseball fans out there that are, that are passionate about baseball and they love the, they love the nostalgic uh vibe of of the game it's the only game i feel like that 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 either on purpose or not major league baseball and their fans look back at history more than any other sport they have throwback jersey games they uh bring out the old timers like in in the nfl i mean they they kind of do that sometimes but it but it it looks weird or it looks mm -hmm. out of place but for baseball like you look at, um, like you look at Calvin Jr. For instance, like you look at him when he was in his prime, and if you ever saw a picture of him like in street clothes, like he looks like such a goofball. <laughs> but his, but the side by side by side, the picture of him in his jersey, he looks like today. He looks like you know the jer the jerseys like the jerseys the jerseys have aged well. I guess <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, it, it, it kind of, it very much is an extension of, of me and, and what I love about baseball. That's really neat. And, and just like the timeless look of the bats kind of like has a, a, a foot in each, um, realm here. You've got the nostalgia and you have like the modern twist to it, which is, I think where is where everybody gets attracted to them. All right. Um, so we talked about your collaborations. Um, and I know you didn't get to list all of them, but um, what was one of your like probably favorite um, brands or organizations to work with? And then on top of that, 
what would be a dream collaboration? Oh man, a dream collaboration. That's a tough one. Um, well, I'll answer the first question first, then I'll think about the second question. Sure. So it's, I think it has to be a toss up between the Boston Red Sox collaboration and the Louisville Slugger collaboration. Um, the, yeah, the Red, the Red Sox one, I think, was the one that personally um, I gained the most, um, what do you call it? Um, I look, I'm proud of that one mm -hmm. more than, than Lola Slugger. It seems um, like a milestone maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like that one is like, I mean, Lola Slugger with that, that project was ridiculous and amazing. And I, I still can't believe I got to do paint the bats for the home run derby. That's ridiculous. Like who, who gets to do that? Nobody mm -hmm. like that's crazy. But the Red Sox one, I feel like had the, had the biggest um, impact on, me personally, um, looking back on last summer when we got to go to Fenway Park for the first time, you know, the collaboration, the Red Sox collaboration, I painted, I painted two bats for them for, for their, uh, photo shoot mm -hmm. for their 20, it was 20, um, I'm drawing a blank on what year it was. I think it was 2018, 2019. No, it was 2017, I think. I, I, I collaborated with, with them. And then they ended up winning the World Series. I think. I, it's, it's all foggy. But anyway, yeah. they, they, reached, they reached out. And, and I, had, I had been kind of like Instagram buddies with Marissa McLean. Um, she's one of their designers. And um, Billy Weiss is their main team photographer. And um, Tim Heitzelman, I think. This is how you say his last name, Heitzelman. Heitzelman, Tim Heitzelman and um, Nick Shee, their, their creative department is, is different than, than a lot of the other MLB creative departments. Like they're, they're very much, they're very accessible. And I think that's different than a lot of the other teams. Like you don't even know who their creative director is. Um, even if you search it on LinkedIn, you can't even find it. So I don't know if that's just like a, a thing that the Red Sox just have always been, very accessible people. Um, but, uh, I, I talked to those, I talked to that team, like at least once a month, just like I'll see something funny or like I'll text Tim or I'll, I'll shoot Marissa a DM or something. And, and it's like totally unrelated to Red Sox baseball. It's just like, they're just, they're like real people or something. But that's really, and, cool. uh, you know, go figure. And, um, so we make these bats for them and, it shows up, it shows up on their Instagram feed. It shows up in all of their programs and it, and it was just like, it just kept giving. It was, it was like the collaboration that kept on giving mm -hmm. and the, the cherry on top was, um, so I I'm 42 now. And when I turned 40, I wanted to go to Fenway and, um, we, we couldn't that summer we couldn't go that summer. Um, and, and so we had to delay our trip by, a, by an entire year. And so in that span of 12 months, I think the Red Sox won the World Series in 2018 is like when, I, and I sent them a bat. I made them a special, special bat to, for the creative department um, and just say congratulations. And then, yeah, that's how it is. So 2018, the Red Sox won the World Series. I sent them a bat. Um, and then two months later, they're like, hey, we want to we wanna do some special Mitchell bats for um, our spring training photos. And I, I think like the, the lesson learned there, like if you're listening and you, and you have, and you have a hard, hard goods product is send it out to people. Like, I mean, but, but, but do it genuinely. Like I, I genuinely just sent them a bat because I was excited for the Red Sox. I, I kind of knew them just from Instagram and I just, I wanted to have it. There's no strings attached. And it turned into this collaboration and then that turned into another collaboration. And then that turned into this amazing trip that I had to Boston where I got to tour the Fenway park, you know, just me and my wife and Marissa and Tim and Nick got to just walk on the field before anybody showed up and we got to go inside the green monster. And that's something that like, as a kid, 
watching watching baseball and knowing what the green monster is and knowing the history of Fenway Park and knowing that it's the oldest major league baseball stadium in the country still operating and we got to go inside of green of the green monster and I got to I got to put numbers like up into the scoreboard That's and uh it was just like I can't I still can't believe that I got to do that and they gave us like free tickets for for two games and they kept like upgrading our seats like they gave us their the seats were fine like they were just they were great seats already mm-hmm. and I saw you know Tim walks up the thing looking for me and he goes he goes get out of these seats I got better seats for you these are these seats are terrible and I'm like dude these are behind home plate like what are you talking about <laughs> they're amazing it's like do you want me in the dugout you know <laughs> I know right and um they were just so kind and, and just so welcoming and and um that was that was just a cool experience and um during that time while I was there I, I get a, a DM from um Victor Rojos which is the baseball announcer for the the angels and um he was like hey come up i, I see you're at family come up to the booth and so in the middle of the game we got to go and and hang out with victor uh in the angels uh booth and it's just i'm just like what is happening right now like there's wow. so many things that are happening that i was not expecting and um you, at the beginning of this of this podcast you mentioned you know hearing my talk and in, in texas and in in that talk i i shared the story for the first time ever about me discovering my bats in the photos that the Red Sox took like all the way down the the sidewalk at Fenway Park. And there were banners that were like 10 feet tall and, you know, um, Mookie Betts, you know, holding a Mitchell bat over his shoulder. And the the bat was like as big as a truck, you know, because it was just these oversized photos. And um, I'll never forget that moment. Like it was just one of those things that like, I was not expecting to walk up on mm. those photos at, at that moment. And I was caught up, I was caught up in the moment and I just was like, wow, that, I think that's kind of when it came, when it kind of came full circle for me of like, what, what, what am I doing? And, and being at Finway park on that sidewalk on that day by myself with my wife, like no one else can experience that. Like, I created this thing seven years ago on no money, like scrappy as you can get. And I'm standing in Fenway Park looking at a photo of a bat that I painted. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it was, it was nuts. Like it was like, so out of, out of all the collaborations, I don't even know what the question was, but I think, I think, <laughs> I think the Red Sox, the Red Sox collaboration has to be, has to be the one that's my favorite for sure. Well, the second question was, which that's a, an amazing story. Cause like as a creative, there's always something awesome about seeing your work out in the wild. You know, it's like, yeah, I, you know, I, I contribute to that or I, I designed that. Yeah. But with something like this where it's, you know, a passion project and you just hustle and hustle and hustle. And it's like to see that pay off. I'm sure that's just so rewarding. Uh, and then especially to get the VIP experience when you arrive, like that's, it, it, it's just, it's, it's all that hard work paid off. And that's just so cool to hear. Um, and, and I can see why that's your favorite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The second question is who, who my dream client? Gosh, I don't even know. Um, I mean, you we have done stuff for Ralph Lauren, Jack Daniels, um, the Red Sox, a couple other MLB teams. <sighs> I don't know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of brands out there that, that I haven't even scratched the surface with. Right. And there's brands out there that seem to be the right fit. Like the ones, I feel like the ones that you've collaborated so far feel like it's the right fit. And there could be brands out there that would be like an amazing opportunity, but maybe not the right fit. So I think there's yeah. like always going to be that conversation of like, where, where's the next step. And that's really cool to think because you've, you've done, you know, brands up here, you've done brands up here and in between. So it's like, kind of gauging now mm-hmm. where where Mitchell Bat fits, you know, yeah. and and getting to be a part of like the history of baseball, you know, in these little moments is is probably just amazing, you know, to yeah. get to experience that and to see it in Ebbets Fields and and you know ESPN and all that stuff. It's just kind of like I, I'm I'm sure it's overwhelming at times, but I but 
but like that yeah. experience with the Red Sox, that's that's got to be rewarding for all the hard work. Yeah, and what I and what I think is cool too is like if it doesn't matter if if I'm painting a bat for the Red Sox or if I'm painting a bat for regular Joe, he's getting the same quality bat. Like the precision that goes into those stripes, and I will not send out a a product I'm not proud of. What, I don't care who it's for. If I don't know you, or if it's for Jack Daniels, like it's it's going to be perfect because like I'm I'm not doing this to to be a, a C player, you know. And and you get to be quality control, right? At the, end of the day you don't have to, and that not might be the benefit of you doing these is. Um, even though you had a guy that was doing a great job, it's like if you did have a full team and you didn't have your eyes on every piece, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have that same, like you were saying, that heart uh, into yeah. it. And, and I think that, that that heart is what has got you where you have been, uh, to be honest. <laughs> All right. So let me, let me give you a little bit, a couple of easier questions. Um, so what, first of all, I don't think we got your favorite baseball team. Or in, in player, so favorite team and player. Okay, um, favorite team is the Cubs, and I I grew up in in Nashville, and there there wasn't a team close by, um, but, but we had WGN, and that was really and and this was prior to the Cubs having lights at their stadium, so they so they got lights at their stadium in 1988 on August 8th, which is my 10th birthday. Eight eight eighty eight. <laughs> wow. And so um, I watched the Cubs, but I really wasn't a, I kind of wasn't a Cubs fan. I was more of like a fan of the players. Like I was an Andre Dawson fan, Ryan Sandberg, Mark Grace. Like I liked those guys, but I also liked Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden. I liked him. So I was, I was like kind of a Mets fan, but also a, a Cubs fan. And then I liked Eric Davis. And then, then I also played for the Reds. And so that made me even like Eric Davis even more. I was a big Pete Rose fan. So then I was kind of a Reds fan. So there was, there was, there's like pictures of me at like my birthday blowing out like a, a Yankees cake wearing a Mets hat and like a Reds t-shirt. And so I was just like, no loyalty at all. Just like, I just, I was a fan of baseball. I loved them all. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I was a big Calvin Jr. fan, so that kind of puts me as a you know Orioles fan. So I don't, I was very much like all over the place as a kid. Yeah. And then I kind of honed in on the Braves um, for you know most of the '90s. Uh, I was like a diehard Braves fan, and then um, the strike happened. And then when I came when I came back to baseball, like I skipped baseball like all through high school, all through college. Didn't watch MLB. Didn't t didn't care about it. Then I got married and we didn't have any money and we didn't have any, didn't have cable, and, but we had WGN. And then now we're back to like watching Cubs games. And so I became a Cubs fan uh, because of WGN again. And it was before they were good. I promise you, I'm not a, not a fair weather Cubs fan. Um, and so fast forward to my birthday on 8808, I turned 30. Mm -hmm. um, we, we went to, went to Wrigley for the, uh, for the 20th anniversary of their first night game. And it was a day game, which I thought was kind of interesting, but, um, mm -hmm. I digress. And, and so I, I became a, a diehard Cubs fan, still am, um, saw them, saw them in the 2015, uh, uh postseason at, at Wrigley. I had tickets to that and that was a blast. Um, I had tickets to game four for 2016 world series and I let them go because I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I can swing this. And, um, but you know, I, I've kind of been a Yankees fan for a while. Don Mattingly has you know, been a, a, a big part of my like baseball story. And um, so, so yeah, so I would say I follow the Cubs closely, mm -hmm. um, the closest and the Yankees second. And then, um, but I'm just, I'm just a fan. I'm just, I'm, yeah. I like Same all thing. the teams. I'm a fan of the game. I'm a, I, I would watch, I have an MLB package. So like, uh, I, I can watch every single game, um, home or home or away broadcast. And so like, I might, I might watch a Mariners, um, D backs game on a Friday night and be mm -hmm. super into and be super into it. You know, it doesn't have to be the Cubs. And I think that's kind of fun. It's fun being a fan 
like have your core team. Um, I think, and I may, you may disagree, but I think everyone is allowed one favorite National League team, one favorite American League team. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. Or t- just like them all. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the way to do it because then you never lose. That's right. <laughs> we all win. <laughs> all right. Um, so let's see. Oh, so this one's going to go way back. What is one of your favorite baseball memories in general? Maybe growing up playing baseball, hmm. um, aside from maybe like uh, your career with Mitchell Bat. So yeah. kind of where it all started. Yeah, I, th- I would say the first MLB game I ever went to was is probably one of those like pivotal moments of my fandom of, of baseball. Um, first game I went to was for my birthday. We went down to Atlanta. I think I'd turned, I just turned 13. Um, we went down to Atlanta and watched a Braves game at Atlanta Fulton County stadium. And so this is the same stadium that Hank Aaron broke his record. Um, Hank Aaron broke, um, Babe Ruth's home run record, uh, 715 home runs career. Um, but it was, it was cool cause we got there early and, uh, I went down to the field to try to get an autograph and didn't have much luck. Didn't, you couldn't get close enough. And Tony Gwynn was playing. He went three for five that night. Gary Sheffield went three for five as well. Um, Dave Justice was playing right field. Ron Gantz playing in left field. Deion Sanders came in to pinch hit. <laughs> I, rem- I remember this. This was, this was like, you know, forever ago. But what I remember the most about that game um, before the game, prior to the game, I went down to the field, like I said, and Benito Santiago was signing autographs at the Padres dugout. And I was like, I can't believe this. This is the first time I've ever seen any, any Major League Baseball player uh, in person. But there's, there's Benny, there's my favorite catcher. And, and so I, I kind of squeeze my way through like the, the crowd of kids and I'm, I have a baseball and I'm like, ah, he's going to sign mine. So it's on my next, and um, I was like six feet away from him, and all these kids behind me were like throwing their ball to to Benny, and one of them like hit him in the chest, and after that happened, he gathered all the all the baseballs on on the dugout, took them in his hands, and turned around and threw them over his head, like into into the stands, <laughs> and it was like like they they couldn't do that now because they would get fined and you know get in trouble, but it was rightfully so, you know, he was kind of mad that he was getting hit by these baseballs. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, I would, I would say my, my first ever MLB experience was probably my most favorite baseball memory. That's cool that you remember that. So, you know, vividly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, okay. So kind of backtracking a little bit, you mentioned the Reds and Pete Rose. So we have a commonality between uh pete rose so i have actually met him and i believe you have met him as well Mm -hmm. i have what was that like so i met pete rose during the 2015 all-star week and i had never been to to all-star game i always wanted to go and i got tickets to it in kind of a funny way like um so in 2014, Bud Selig ended his like commissioner role and Rob Manfred took over in during like 2014 to 2015 season. And I followed this Instagram account called OMG Reds. And it was ran by a couple of guys that were just like diehard Reds fans. And there was this post that he posted in 2014. And it was a, it was a, it was a 2015 all-star ball like a Rawlings ball because you know they have a different ball for every single all-star game they have a different ball commemorative ball that they use but it was it had Bud Selig's stamp on it and so it was kind of funny because like Bud Selig is is no longer the commissioner but for some reason Rawlings and Major League Baseball went ahead and made this made this like phenomenon phenomenon of Mm -hmm. a baseball because Rob Manfred's the the commissioner of baseball now and so I posted on that, I, I commented on that, on that photo, I need that ball. <laughs> Just, you know, being stupid. And there's this guy, his name is Matthew, on Instagram, Matthew Scott King. I'll never forget this. He said, um, do you have tickets to the, 
to the all-star game and this was like this was in december and i said i said no but if i had tickets i would go <laughs> and minutes later i get an email from this random guy matthew king matt king uh he says hey i have a ticket for you and i was like you got to be kidding me because it was in cincinnati and it's only like four hours from nashville and um he said yeah just let's just do a trade I, let's, let's trade some mitchell bats for um this all-star ticket mm-hmm. and i'm like okay <laughs> and, um, but he was like let me let me ask my let me run it by my wife first and and we'll see and that kind of stuff sometimes um you know, I get emails like that sometimes and I'm like, this is not going to happen. Um, but not only did it happen, um, I met Matt for the first time when he gave me the, his all-star ticket, never met him, only talked to him on the, only had really just texted him. Um, we're like best friends now. Um, he has four kids and I'm, I'm the godfather of, of his fourth child. Like we're like brothers and it, it all started with like this stupid Instagram post that led into like him wanting me to come to Cincinnati. And then not only did I go to the all-star game, but um, there was a store called article menswear that was an OTR. If you're familiar with uh, Cincinnati at all, um, there's an area called OTR and they reached out and they're like, Hey, we want to do a, a pop-up shop, a pop-up store at our, at our shop. Um, to feature Mitchell bat and it's, it'll be a night of like baseball and beer and stories and come and come and sell your stuff. And it's on a Friday. It's the Friday of all-star week. And so now that, that puts me, that bookends me in Cincinnati from Friday to Tuesday. And so what should I do in that, that time period? So I got home run derby tickets as well. I went to the futures game. And so I had, I had tickets to everything. And then, Cincinnati was like my favorite all-star week um, because they had, they took, they brought everyone out. Like there was something to do for 12 hours a day, every day of the, of that moment of that, of that all-star week. And Pete Rose was signing autographs at this big like baseball card expo. And it was like Pete Rose and Lou Piniella, Barry Larkin, Eric Davis, uh, Chris Sabo was, was there. I mean, there was just everybody that you can even imagine was there and I got a I got a Pete Rose um autograph Mitchell bat and wow. this uh this really cool like um illustration of, of Pete Rose. Um it, it was just it was cool meeting him but it, he didn't he didn't really say much. He was kinda quiet. He was kind of a quiet guy. I told him where I was from. I was like, hey I'm from Nashville. I I run I painted this bat for you to sign Mitchell Bat Co and gave him my card and he's kinda nodded his head and and uh but, Great, great. Find it, find the bat. Gave it a little like swing and handed it back to me. That was it. <laughs> That's all you need, uh, as long as you can tell the story that Pete Rose, yep. you know, did a little swing with your bat. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and all that's on all that's on YouTube on my on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I think that I, I scrolled past that and I was like, that's cool. <laughs> um, my story is not nearly as interesting and cool as that, but, um, I, I was thinking I was on like a family trip, uh, when I was in high school or college in Vegas out of all places. And we're walking through some of the resorts there. And I think it was either Mandalay Bay or MGM, but there's like this mall that connects, um, connects some of the hotels and we're just walking through the mall. And all of a sudden there's this like this memorabilia type shop and, um, my dad looks over and he sees a sign that says Pete Rose autographs or like Pete Rose is yeah. making an appearance. And we're like, Oh my gosh, when is that? And it's like, no, he's in there right now. <laughs> and we're like, what, what is he doing here? You know, it's just such a random experience. And <laughs> we walk in there, there was no line. It was just like, he was sitting at his, at his table signing stuff and there happened to be no line uh and we just walked up and got his autograph i got a autograph picture and that was like the coolest thing just so nice. spontaneous uh but and and kind of like your encounter he didn't really talk much mm-hmm. um you know we did tell him it's like we got to get you in that hall of fame we got to make yep. it happen and yeah. uh, he was like i totally agree and he actually he actually did kind of start talking a little bit 
um, just there was nobody in line. And uh, it was kind of cool getting his take on, you know, on the current state of, you know, mm-hmm. things and then the Hall of Fame. But, but that was, that was pretty, pretty neat to walk up on um, and then just, just meet the legend that he is. So, but I thought that was interesting that we both, that we both met him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he still has a very great signature. Mm-hmm. Like it looks nice and clean and he took his time to, to, to do it right. Definitely. Um, I'll only give you a few more. Um, so we'll take too much of your time. Um, so um, let's see. Oh, here's, here's a good one. So being a creative uh, in the baseball world, we're constantly looking at design. We're constantly looking at branding. Which is your favorite um, baseball logo or branding that you've seen uh, either recently or at a certain period of time? Hmm. That's a good, that's a very good question. Because there's a lot of good ones and there's a lot of bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, I mean, I think the Yankees, the Yankees logo and branding uh, is pretty phenomenal. And, they, and they've protected their brand um, since, since the beginning, like, um, you know, with like them having a, a Nike swoosh on the front of their, their Jersey, I think is, is kind of heartbreaking a little bit, but, um, I like the, the Yankees logo that has the, um, like the uncle Sam hat on it, you know, like the bat. Have you seen that logo? It's like a, it's like a bat and it has like a, uh, uncle Sam hat on it, like a stripe. Yes. yes. It's like and a it's full like, kind of lockup thing. Yeah. That one. And then also the New York Mets, um, kind of their logo that has like the, the backdrop. Uh, I like those old school, like logos that are like kind of weird mm-hmm. and they're like, they're like kind of bad, but that's what makes them good. More somehow. graphic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's, that's, that's what stands out to me is the Mets and the Yankees, like, have have a solid have a solid brand story that they've they've really kept going since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine is is really simple. It's not even a team that I'm like a super fan of, but I did buy a hat because I love their logo, and that's the Milwaukee Brewers. Ah, yes. This, this logo right here yep. is, is is one of the cleverest things I've ever seen. The MB uh, in baseball, yeah, and it yeah. Love. like I. I've just always seen that, and, and I know that they went away away from it for a while, and then they've recently brought it back, which I was like celebrating so hard. <laughs> I I just growing up and seeing that logo, I'm like, I got to get a hat just because. It's a good one. Logo. <laughs> it's a good one for sure. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll give you one more question, and that is kind of based around what um, what Random Jam is, and we kind of talk about you know random uh, entertainment stuff like music. Uh, movies, TV, sports. Um, and so I'm going to g- leave you here with a question of what is your favorite baseball movie or TV show? Okay. It's got to be Major League. Uh, that's the one that I watched at, at way too young of an age uh, when I was little. <laughs> and that's the one, that's the one, that's, the, that's the, my favorite old baseball movie. Um, favorite new baseball movie has got to be Moneyball. Mm-hmm. I watch that one quite often. Uh, it's a fantastic story. It's a calming. It's a calming experience. But yeah, I would say, I would say Major League Moneyball and Field of Dreams has to be in there somewhere. Oh yeah, that, that's that's the the staple of of all yeah. baseball movies. <laughs> oh yeah. For me. Um, it's it's usually a tie. It really depends on the day. A tie between Rookie of the Year and Sandlot. But okay. most of the time, Sandlot is number one because it's just it's nostalgic. Which I'm sure yep. you figured out. I'm a very nostalgic person. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Um, but that movie just like it takes me back to to that age, um, that kind of like you know the Sandlot days, and it's just it's just such a Oh, a weird movie, but like such a great baseball movie. Yep. Um, I agree. And then Rookie yeah, my, of the Year is just goofy and fun, but, but uh-huh. I always seem to land on the Sandlot. Yeah, my, my girls love the Sandlot. And so that, that just like warms my heart. <laughs> Definitely. 
All right. Well, um, so do you happen to have anything uh, you want to share or plug before we go? Sure. Yeah. Mitchellbatco.com. I uh, get your orders in for Christmas coming soon and uh, custom bats. Uh, also hockey sticks, uh, just added hockey sticks to Mitchellbatco.com and uh, I'm adding footballs. Leather, leatherhead sports footballs are coming soon to the site. So it's a Mitchell Batco is expanding to into, into other sports because I, I love baseball, but I also love a lot of other sports, but uh, yeah, check us out. Mitchellbatco.com. I'm waiting to see that cricket bat show up on the <laughs> <TV. laughs> coming soon for those, for the international, you know, customers. So yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, that's aw That's awesome. Um, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Um, thank you so much, Jeremy, for being here, sharing your, your awesome story and in, inspiring all of us to go do our thing and, you know, launch now. And, um, and that, that's so great that, that you're still in it, still doing it. And um, we're excited to see where things go with that. Awesome. Cool, man. Thanks. That was a, good, that was a great conversation. For sure. For sure. I definitely appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in for this very special episode, episode five of the Random Jam podcast featuring Jeremy Mitchell of Mitchell Back Company. Uh, it was super awesome to get to sit down and talk to him. Uh, Reese, any final thoughts on it? All I can say is it's such an inspiring story to hear. Um, it really makes me want to go out and just like do something awesome with ideas that I might have just kind of sitting on the shelf that I would possibly be able to do something with but um for him to get the chance to do that and um to to be super passionate about it and love what he does is really cool and um i hope that he continues to do this for years to come um so to wrap up our uh, little baseball episode here uh we got the world series coming up with the tampa bay devil rays versus the los angeles dodgers so lane um who do you got for this matchup well, um, being a Houston fan, I would rather just see the Rays beat the Dodgers and go all out. Because I mean, if they would knocked us out, I'd rather just see them win it all. Uh, <laughs> also, I mean, we kind of have bad blood with the Dodgers as it is. So, Oh, yeah. That yeah. would have been a crazy World Series to see them together again. To see it again. I know I secretly wanted it to happen again, but I was like, oh, I don't know. It's kind of it's too dicey. But <laughs> So I'll probably, I'll probably be rooting for Tampa Bay. Well, what's funny is – I'm mad at the Rays for kicking out the Yankees this year in the playoffs because I, I was like – I was watching the Yankees all year and I thought, man, they are on fire. Aaron Judge is on fire. He's doing great. And um, I was just like, you know, if they go to the World Series, that would be awesome, uh, especially in this abbreviated season that we've had. And uh, so my my bets right now are on the, the, the Dodgers because, uh, I mean, I was, I was hoping the, the Braves would have – push through but um their offense just was not having it and la was just pushing through each game and ended up taking the series uh after Braves had the lead so uh i really i really think this is gonna be a great matchup two very strong teams you've got the rays with very strong pitching and you've got the dodgers with very uh very strong offense so it's just gonna be kind of like a a head like just bashing heads the entire time yeah. And you know, it's funny. Yeah. The, I wanted the Braves to win actually, because a little side note, my great grandfather played for the Boston Braves before they were even the Red Sox. And wow. yeah. So a lot of people don't know that the Boston Braves, their Braves were there before they moved to Atlanta. So yeah, I really, I wanted the Braves to win in all actuality, but yeah. So now I guess I'll go for the Rays instead. Cause I mean, if they knocked out uh, New York and Houston, I mean, they, I think they deserve the win, but we'll see what happens. It is going to be a really good world series. Yeah, honestly, at the end of the day, whoever wins, we all win because it's going to be a great series. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, we're going to head on out of here. We thank you so much for watching. We want to thank Jeremy again for coming on and telling us about Mitchell Bat Company. Uh, definitely go check him out on his website, MitchellBatCo.com. Follow him on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever you can find him. Support his business. He's doing a great job. Uh, find us on social media at Random Jam on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, so check us out on that as well. And we thank you so much for being here. Have a great weekend and we'll see you later.
always loved baseball and I played Little League Baseball as a kid and you know I went to games with my family and I just have a lot of fond memories about baseball. After school one day my buddy he showed me his baseball card collection he had an album kind of like this but he had a Daryl Strawberry rookie card and uh, it was like behind this like really awesome protective case and uh, after seeing that card I was hooked. sent um, a letter to Cecil Fielder, Nolan Ryan, Will Clark. Every day after school, I would come home and ask my mom, did anything come today? Did anything come today? Man, when something came in the mail, the Cecil Fielder was like my favorite because it came in a big envelope and I pulled it out and there it was, his signature. <sighs> Cecil Fielder right there on the thing. Baseball is all in my house all the time. And I watch the games and I study the uniforms and I look at the old photos from the 1920s of the uniform design and different stripe patterns in baseball. So I started drawing these baseball bats with different stripes and color patterns and I posted those on Instagram and people started liking them. And the next thing you know, you know, people were asking, you know, where can we buy these things? I thought, you know, maybe I should try to make this a real thing. I know I wanted one, that's why I started it. It was October 30th, 2013, during game six of the World Series, and I'm just sitting there by myself watching this game. And so, just got super excited, and I couldn't wait any longer, so I launched Mitchell Bat Company. One thing led to another, and four days later, I sold my first bat. A couple days later, a guy in Oakland bought a bat. And then the day after that, somebody in Hawaii bought a bat. And then a week later, I was featured on coolmaterial.com. A week after that, I was featured on ESPN Holiday Gift Guide. And so all these things just kept happening just really fast. And so we had to really figure out how to run this thing. And the rest is history. When I go to a baseball game, I'm just a big kid. I want the autograph, and I want the foul ball. and you know, I get there and it's heaven to me. And for nine innings, I'm a kid again. And My real hope is that people will look at my bats and get inspired to go and watch a baseball game or go pick up a glove and go have, have a catch. Or they're reminded of something that their grandfather told them about baseball. And really, the more bats we sell to people, the less about the bats it's becoming.